What an absolute corker of a game we've just seen in round seven of Norway chess. Magnus Carlsen had the white pieces, Ali Reza Firuzja black. This is their classical game. Let's see what happened. So Magnus goes e4. Ali Reza does not go e5. He goes for the Sicilian. And then the real surprise, after knight f3, he goes pawn e6. Now what's the big deal? Well basically he doesn't play this. He normally plays a Nidorf if he dabbles with the Sicilian. So this was unexpected. And now Magnus hits Ali Reza with the disrespect bishop's opening, bishop d3. What the hell is that move? How ugly does that look? Sat like a big pawn. And this is the cool thing about modern chess, right? These guys will just play anything at the moment, I swear, you know, to try and take their opponents out of book. I mean, would you see this 40 years ago in like the stuffy old 80s? They're playing all the classic stuff, top level tournament. This is just awesome, modern chess. And now watch what Ali Reza does in response. What is the most aggressive move you can think of here for black? Yes, Ali Reza plays it and it's computer approved, pawn to g5. Stockfish is giving it as the top move here. So really aggressive, flank attack, countering this slow central play from Magnus, and now Magnus just goes bishop b5, saying I'm gonna play the entire position a tempo down. And now the next couple moves from Ali Reza are a bit strange, because he goes g4 in a moment, followed by h5, but doesn't do it straight away. But I don't understand why if he's gonna do that, why not do it here? Drive the knight back to e1, this is pleasant, then h5, support the pawn from the queen's attack. What Ali Reza does is go bishop g7 to start with. Now this isn't as good, because Magnus can take, pawn recaptures, and he gets time to push this d-pawn. So now when Ali Reza goes g4, he drops the knight back and it's got that new square on d2 that it didn't have before. And now white is apparently a bit better. So pawn h5 played, knight b3, swings round to look at this pawn, also clears the way for this knight to develop here and come to c4. You know, these guys, they know the squares to put their pieces on, right? Magnus doesn't want the knight on c3 in this particular structure. So d6 from Ali Reza, he covers this pawn. We get pawn to f4 from Magnus, very thematic kind of move, pushing that f pawn, opening the rook. You could also go f3 there, and you don't want to capture, activate the queen. So Ali Reza carries on developing with knight e7. Logical to bring it here and not here. Don't block the bishop, don't walk into pawn pushes and stuff in future. And now Magnus really shows with this move why he is world number one and a former world champion of 10 years, right? He plays the move of bishop d2, giving an entire pawn, which Ali Reza takes, best move, and an exchange if he wants it. Now, he surely can't have home prepped this after the weirdness of the opening. So to find this over the board, bishop a5 follow-up, queen d7 only move, knight 1 to d2, heading for c4, seeing the discoordination of the black pieces, is just inspirational really, and shows what a strong, strong player he is. Now, if you capture here, well, the point being, the queen recaptures on the rook, and it's such a dangerous attack for white. If you castle, the queen comes and sits here, bishop c3 coming, it's just a deadly attack, also with these pawn pushes in the air. And if instead of castling, you play knight g6, top computer move, looks impossible because of f5, removing the defender of the rook, although then the knight comes here. Well, there's still loads of attacking ideas, like takes here, you know, decoying the pawn, queen takes back. In this particular line, the queen's come off, now the computer says black's a bit better. But long story short, there's a ton of attacking ideas for white if this exchange was taken, too dangerous to Ali Reza's eyes. So he goes bishop g7, and Magnus now goes queen e1. It gets the double x glam, presumably because he's leaving that rook hanging, although going back here, it's a bit weird then why this knight developing didn't get the double x glam, leaving the rook, but okay, that's a chess.com thing. So we get queen e1, and the idea of this is just activating on the dark squares. You know, if you castle, for example, queen h4, the pawn's loose, looks dangerous, very, very unpleasant. So we get bishop a6 from Ali Reza, but just hopping back a move, look at the clock time. Hour and seven minutes for Ali Reza, bishop a6, 30 minute think. 
and it really shows the power of Magnus's idea and how Ali Reza just has a really uncomfortable time now developing his pieces. So he's looking at this C4 square, preparing to chop this knight. Magnus now excavates the rook from the corner, decides not to give the exchange, brings it to the D file, and it's a nice prophylactic move. You know, if knight C4, bishop chops, pawn takes, well, the rook is active. So we get pawn F5 from Ali Rezanel. Great move gives the king some room here, fights for some central space, and takes control of this e4 square. Because Magnus now pushes on with the pawn, best move, and he's trying to undermine this pawn, which then undermines the protection of this pawn. So Ali Reza, how does he respond? Well, with the best move of knight g6. And Magnus now had a key choice of which direction to go in with the pawn structure. So if you take here immediately, queen recaptures, then knight c4, bishop takes, pawn takes, the rook hits the queen, it drops to keep this pawn covered, well then after queen e3, pressuring again, in this line, Ali Reza achieves, e, uh, achieves, achieves e5, and you know, there's different moves you can take here with the knight, or you can take here, but look at the play now for Ali Reza, the pieces are coming back into the game. Compare that with knight c4 immediately. Now the bishop takes because of the pressure here, the pawn recaptures, and this time, because of the pressure here, you can't take, you know, you can't do anything like that, there's a threat to take here, so you have to push on with d5. And after Magnus takes, the queen drops to a light square, doesn't want to come onto a dark square, for example, run into this stuff, where we can see the difference in the pawn structure. These pieces here on the uh, king side, the bishop and knight, are really hemmed in by those pawns, and Magnus has got this really nice dark squared grip and all the space to play with. But how to proceed? Well, this is instructive. You can start with bishop b4 or knight b3, as Magnus does, just a new construction of the pieces, where this one's coming to d4 and this one's hitting the diagonal. Now, you can't go c5 to try and block those ideas. There's too many problems with the d-pawn. So what should Ali Reza do? Well, challenge this dark squared grip. You know, bishop f8, top move in the position, or bishop h6 first, hit this one, provoke g3, then drop back. <coughs> Excuse me, but you have to challenge this idea. Instead, Ali Reza castles, understandable he wants to get the king away to safety, but now bishop b4. It's almost like he was goading that move. The rook slides and bishop d6. And look at this grip for Magnus. So queen a6 on the board, pressures the c-pawn, and now Magnus, he makes a blunder here. So what should he do? Well, push c5 immediately, cement this bishop. But he plays bishop, uh, sorry, bishop, queen c3, really natural looking move to cover this pawn, but he stepped onto the line of this bishop. You know, I was thinking about that bishop when I almost called the queen a bishop there. Now, there's a tactical shot here, not easy to see, but it was possible to play a great move. Do pause it if you want to look for it. Ali Reza didn't find it, he could have gone pawn c5. Now before I show you the power of this move, what happens if you take this pawn straight away? Well, queen takes, pawn takes, knight c5, this is a massive grip for white because the b file is covered, the c file is dead with these pawns, the knight is killing it, the d file is closed, etc. So what if you go c5 first? Well, now here's the trick. If the knight captures, you now take the bishop with the queen. Pawn takes and you pick up the loose queen. This is the whole idea. And therefore, after c5, you have to take with this bishop. But now when you take here with the queen, queen takes, pawn takes. Well, the knight has to come to d4, not as optimal as c5. And there's no black pawn sitting on c6 like there was before. So long story short, you can activate a rook down the b file now. You've also got access to the c file in some lines. Different position, you know, black's uh, well in the game there. But c5 missed. Ali Reza goes for this one. Same idea to take, use the pin. But of course, c5, Magnus shuts it down. <coughs> Excuse me, can't find my voice. And one thing to note here, this pawn is basically immune because not only are the rook trap, uh, queen trap ideas right now, but even sooner when there wasn't the queen trap ideas, you just sideline that queen too much and activate the rooks. So Ali Reza's never taking here. Instead, he goes bishop h6, pressures the f-pawn. 
we get g3 to defend and now look at the challenge of Ali Reza's position he goes rook d7 start shuffling that rook knight d4 there comes the monster peering over the ramparts pressuring these pawns rook f7 comes across rook b1 hits the open file and now pawn h4 Ali Reza trying to drum up some play so queen d3 offers the exchange. Ali Reza doesn't want it. He has to try and go for something against the king. Long term, he's strategically lost. a3 from Magnus looks to go rook b4, harass that queen. So pawn a5 played, covers the square, but puts the queen in jail, which looks very risky. But there isn't actually a way to trap that queen. I mean, you want to go knight e2 to c3. But then as soon as the knight moves, you know, the queen can activate to a square or something like that. I guess the queen can come here as well, although that pawn structure is horrible for black. Anyway, rook fd1 played by Magnus. So he covers this knight with the rook, prepares queen b3, and Ali Reza's just like, right, I've got to go for it. I'm going to get squashed. So he takes here, pawn recaptures, and now he sacks here giving a, a piece for two pawns, you know, the rook left here, so it's now possible, and just going for play. Now, Wesley was in the studio at the time, and he was saying, okay, if it was me, I'd probably chicken out here and go queen b3. Not that it's a chicken move, I mean, it's the second top, right? But you can go queen e3, keep the queens on the board. But Magnus, you know, very true to his style, let's get those queens off the board. This end game is surely hopeless for black. Well, watch what happens here. This is incredible. Now, you can check already with the knight from h3, but Ali Reza flicks in this a4 move. Second best move, <clears throat> it's just kind of a nice one. It's like a randomizer, right? Where's the rook going? Do you want to stay on the b file? Are you going to stay on the third rank uh, across here? Well, Magnus goes for rook b4. It is the top engine move. Now we get rook h7 hitting the open file. Rook f1 hits the knight. We get check. King g2, and now a nice maneuver from Ali Reza. You know, I'd be looking at something like this, but it's just not the best move because now the knight is glued defending this pawn. And what's the follow up? White takes here. If you go check, for example, King g3, there's no further moves for black. So instead, knight g5 comes. We get knight takes on e6 and knight e4. Very, very nice centralized square supported by the D pawn as well. And Ali Reza hopefully wants to get these ones going if he can. And now Magnus, he completely miscalculates. Very un Magnus, I tell you. Look at his clock, he has got time here. But he plays a bad exchange sacrifice of rook takes on e4. The D pawn recaptures and he drops back with knight d4, ready to run this C pawn but he's missed an idea for Ali Reza because Ali Reza starts with rook h3, we get c6, but now king f7, c7, and this rook joins the h file. So suddenly there's this crazy counterplay going on. There's perpetual ideas and even dangerous ideas for black. So Magnus goes knight c6. He's got ideas of knight d8 check, also blocks this protection, you know, then you can promote the pawn. Ali Reza checks, the king steps up, and now he takes this pawn, hitting the knight, and apparently the best move for Magnus, the only one to keep equality, is rook to h1. Idea being, if you take, well then you make a queen, that's no good. But you don't have to take, you know, uh, sorry, you can go rook e8, is one of the top moves, or check first, you know, and it says zeros as usual, zero, 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 the most drawerist position you've ever seen, right? Anyway, rook c2 on the board, Magnus doesn't find it, this is human chess, he checks from the back crank, the king goes to g6, now covering this square, so the king can never run like this, we get knight takes on e6, and check, the king goes to f4, and rook f3, uh, f3, 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 check, that would be checkmate, but you can capture with the rook. The pawn recaptures. It's running through. This one's covered. So the king has to step back. And now Ali Reza, he had a victory here. He could have had a famous swindle, losing all game, if he finds a move. Again, pause if you want to try and find the only winning move for black. So what could Ali Reza have played is the move of pawn to f2. 
you have to step back with the king, cover that queening square, then there's g3, it supports this pawn, there's the classic theme of course, you can never take or this promotes, and the whole point of supporting is now you're preparing rook c1, make a queen. So black, uh, sorry, white has to step back and check, the king steps up, and then this is apparently best, harassing these pawns, f4 comes, I won't keep going and going with the line here. It says white should now make a queen, distract the rook, start pushing this. It gives it kind of advantage to black and then it looks like it might be a draw, but then it looks to be winning for black. It's too many lines, but okay, could have been winning for black, should have been according to the engine. But Ali Reza checks, looks so logical to drive that king away. But the big problem is you cannot play the move you want to play because now white goes check the king goes and you make a queen here. And actually, although black queens, white is just way faster, you know, literally checkmating the black king. So coming back here, that's why you can't go pawn f2. The only circumstance you could go pawn f2 is if Magnus steps this way. Now you do it, uh, whoops, sorry, f2, and though they make a queen, well, black gets a queen first, and this time it's black who's mating white because you queen with check. So that's why Magnus stays on the H file. We get this repetition and it goes to an Armageddon. Now, I have not seen that Armageddon. I've paused on the video. I'm gonna watch the replay now, then bring you that analysis, but I just had to cover this classical game as well tonight on the channel. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for the Armageddon. All right, we're into the Armageddon. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what this is, if the players draw their classical game, they play an Armageddon game where they keep the same colors, so Ali Reza has black, but he has less time than Magnus. However, he only needs to draw to take the victory, which gives him some extra points. Magnus, therefore, needs to win. So he opens with e4, we get e5, there we can see the clock times reflected, knight f3, and Ali Reza plays the Petrov, or the Russian game. So just trying to shut things down early doors. Kicks away this knight, takes the pawn, and now you gotta say, Magnus has got a sense of humor, right? He plays bishop to d3. He's just in love with that move today. Okay, the knight drops back. We get castles, bishop e7, pawn h3, castles from Ali Reza. How is Magnus gonna stir it up here? You know, why is this so drawish? We'll look at this kind of stuff going on here, you know, pieces exchanging off, and the pawn structure is symmetrical. The difficulty at the top level is if you don't have imbalances, how do you create complications and winning chances? So d4 now from Magnus. Now, he does get a little something here because he now goes c4, we get bishop f5, knight c3, knight c6, and okay, Magnus has got a little something to play for. Computer gives him 0.7 ahead, he's got a centre going on here, queen b3, he starts to probe at that b pawn, Ali Reza covers, you know, you could go b6, but you start to weaken the light squares, and Magnus does get some initiative now. So maybe Ali Reza went slightly wrong there in the opening, but okay, we won't deep dive on that. Magnus now kicks on with d5. Now, if you go knight to e7, it looks a bit passive, and still white's got ideas of bishop e3, pushing on with c5 soon. I mean, you can go b6, but then the queen can move, b4, prepare the same idea. So instead, Ali Reza plays the top move, knight e5, and Magnus just captures here. I mean, knight d4, very tempting, but this one's so good and so instructive. Because now the bishop comes to e3 and he just wants to crack on with pawn to c5, use that four on three majority on the queen side. So knight d7 from Ali Reza looks at c5 and that's the strategic battle now. The rook comes to c1, b6 plays against the pawn push, knight a4 renews the idea. And bishop d6 now from Ali Reza, just walking into this pawn push, but it is actually the top computer move. Magnus cracks on, we see pawn captures, knight captures, and here from Ali Reza, rook to b8, picking up tempo on the queen. But Magnus now finds a really tricky response. So instead of moving his queen, you know, you'd love to go something like this just stay with the pawn and everything, but then you can have this exchange here, and the problem is, if the queen recaptures, you leave the pawn, actually the best move for black here is queen b7, double hitting these pawns. 
But anyway, rook b8. So you can't go here. If you go queen a3, you're walking into a self pin, even though the computer says it's okay. But Magnus goes bishop a6. Look at that for a counter shot, saying, okay, if you take me, I take you, and this is good for me, basically. Your rook's still on prees, and then I'm actually, yeah, this is winning a piece, essentially, isn't it? So not what you want here is black. So what does Ali Reza do? Well, there's only one move here to keep the balance and Ali Reza misses it. You know, he's just not quite so sharp right now, you feel, in some certain positions. I mean, he's still a tactical genius, but I feel like he was sharper a couple years ago. I always remember 2020, that online blitz match. He played against Magnus in the COVID lockdown. Just the way he was seeing the board at that point was insane. Anyway, this was the move he was supposed to play. Now if the bishop takes, you take here, and black's got a really good game. If you want to keep working that out, I won't keep going on the line. Um, so after knight takes here, yeah, you have to take with the bishop, and then queen d8 is the best move, and it keeps a balance. But okay, coming back here, Ali Reza, he misses this. He goes queen e8, but now Magnus finds a superb move of knight to b7. Weird looking move, but it cuts the attack of the queen and also opens this bishop to take this pawn. Plus there's ideas now here, you know, pressuring that bishop. And so if you go something passive, like say rook a8, covering this pawn, well now you can chop, the pawn recaptures and you just start pressuring stuff. Queen a3, this queen can cover, but then rook c7, you know, you're still pressuring here. There's bishop b5 ideas. It's just awful. You can't go passive. The top GMs know this. So knight b6 from Ali Reza was played, and now again Magnus, just on top form, doesn't take the bishop, which is a good move, but not the top move. He finds the top one of rook c6, just adding a ton of pressure here. And if you go for something like this, trying to hold everything together, well, you can still chop things down, then take here, win a clean pawn, and this isn't just any pawn. You've now got a two connected past pawns rolling there on the queen side. So queen e7, no good. What if you try bishop d7? Still these kind of problems. You can't even trap the rook because bishop c5, this is something I was looking at, no good. So Ali Reza tries knight c8, looking to glue everything together, holding here, holding here, but now Magnus chops, we see the knight recaptures, and he plays queen to c3. Stepping out of the attack of the rook, now preparing to pick up this c7 pawn. So Ali Reza, he's got to get active and look for counterplay, and he starts with bishop to e4, one of the top moves here. The other one was knight e4. So he's looking at this d pawn, also down at the white king. You know, one day could he push an f pawn, queen g6, that kind of thing. Now Magnus, he takes this pawn here, and Ali Reza, he goes wrong. So he should capture this pawn here, because in this variation, the queen is still covering the e pawn, so you can't play queen takes here, hitting two pieces, obviously you lose your queen. But what we see in the game is this queen a4 move inserted first. Now I can understand it of course because it hits this bishop here, activates the queen and after bishop f1 from Magnus, well now there's two pawns on prees and you know Ali is getting his pieces out. But he can't now take this one or this time there's queen e5, you lose a piece, no good. So instead Ali Reza starts by taking the a pawn but this is a blunder. Magnus takes here and it actually leads to resignation from Ali Reza. Why? Because if you now capture this pawn, I mean, say you go with the bishop, by the way, okay, the knight drops. So say you go with the queen, well, here's the problem. You capture, bishop recaptures, and rook d7 is just winning a piece. The knight moves, you pick up this one, and you haven't even got rook b6 to cover, or the bishop just chops here. So a great fighting game. Magnus is now on five out of five in his Armageddons, or maybe it's six out of six. I don't know, they were saying he's won all his Armageddons, which is crazy. But look at this clip. This is nice to see. The players just smiling, relaxing, fair play, analyzing. Good to see, even though they fight hard on the board. I'll leave this one to play out, plus with the standings. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. And wow, Farusha stops the clock and resigns. Yeah, Magnus once again.
takes an Armageddon victory and nets one and a half points. And there you see the two players smiling, analyzing. But what a dominating performance by Magnus in the Armageddon match. Yeah, it was abrupt to the finish there, but he was always in control, Magnus. Judith, nice technique. 